I just like emotional books that make me feel all the feels. Together with my roommate, and I'm gonna introduce her to you. This is... Hi guys, welcome to another reading vlog. I am so excited because I'm doing another reading challenge video. And it's been a long time since I've done a reading vlog like this. I've missed doing it. And today I will start reading 100 pages a day for the next couple of days. I've said day so many times in this sentence. Oh my God. <laughs> I just haven't been able to read as much as I have had in the past in 2021 because I had so much spare time. But now I am following one course less than usual. So I will have way more time on my hands to read some amazing books. So let me show you my TBR. But before we are gonna get into today's video, I have to thank today's sponsor, which is Book of the Month. Book of the Month is a super fast growing online bookish service, which is perfect for every single reader because every single month, their team vets hundreds of different books. They make a top five and you can choose from those top five books that they have selected. These can range from like super early release titles, debut authors to some of your new favorites. And by using their service, you save time with researching all of the books that you wanna read and you can spend more time actually reading the books. What is so perfect about them is that they are a risk-free surface, meaning that if you don't like any of the books that they choose for that certain month, you can always skip it. You can choose either like a different book or you can even add some extra books to your order. So basically you can skip any month, any time, and you will not be charged. Quick little note, Book of the Month only ships to US addresses. They do not ship internationally, unfortunately. I feel your pain, I understand you. <laughs> and maybe their biggest plus side is that they have the best price for their new release hardcover fiction books. And if you use my personal code, Sabine, you can get your first Book of the Month book for just $9.99, which is a ridiculously good price. And now my favorite part is showing you guys the books that they chose for the month of February. First off, we have Peach Blossom Spring by Melissa Fu. This multi-generational epic traces the enthralling story of a mother and son who journey from China to America. Next up, a very spicy cover, which is Vladimir by Julia May Jonas. This darkly humorous exploration of gender and power follows a contemporary curious female professor in the midst of a scandal. I feel like Book of the Month always has some great thriller picks and for February they chose The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Hanneken. Hakkinen? I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the twisty tale of a therapist with unconventional methods trying to unlock the mystery of a perfect marriage. Then a book that I have been seeing popping up everywhere online, which is called A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. And this is their fantasy pick. Unexplained disappearances draw a reluctant hero back to his island home to confront spirits in the spellbinding tale. And then my pick for this month is <laughs> Don't Cry For Me by Daniel Black. This one just seems like a beautifully emotional story and I cannot wait to pick this one up. What do you say to someone you loved but failed? Here, a father uses letters to express his love for his estranged son. Thank you so much again to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. Like I said, use my code Sabine to get your first Book of the Month book for just $9.99. And now let's go on to my week of reading. So if you saw my last like study slash reading vlog, you know that I am currently reading It Only Happens in the Movies by Holly Bourne. And I'm currently on page 32 out of the 400. It's a relatively chunkier YA contemporary and Holly Bourne is one of my favorite authors. I feel like she's fairly unknown in the book community, especially if you're not from the UK because she is a UK author. And I feel like more people need to read her. I just finished reading the Spencer Club trilogy by her, which is, one of my favorites. This is one of her standalones. And in this one, we follow Audrey who meets Henry and it's kind of like the start of a truly cinematic romance, but is it really? Basically, Harry is like every single movie cliche bundled up into a person. And she's kind of struggling of whether or not she will decide to 
let him get to her or how do you call it? Like whether she chooses to let him into her heart. Audrey is also dealing with some personal issues. Her mother and father have just separated and her father actually wants to sell the house that she and her mother are staying in right now. So I feel like that will definitely be a personal struggle as well. And she just started working at this really fancy cinema together with Harry because he already worked there. So I'm really curious to see what this story will be about. I have absolutely no clue. I just really like Holly Bourne's this, like writing style. Her characters can definitely be flawed but I always feel like they have a nice character arc in the book and that they definitely learn throughout their whole experience that will be shared with us um, in these 400 pages. And feminism is always really at the forefront as well as mental health so I'm expecting to get those themes in this book too. Then to make it myself a bit more easier <laughs> with the 100 pages a day challenge I want to read a graphic novel. So I'm grabbing my iPad so I can show you. On Scribd, which is an app on which you can like listen to audiobooks but also read graphic novels, I have a little link that you can use. I am not sponsored by Scribd or whatever but it's just like this program that if you sign up using my link we both get an extra month of using Scribd for free. So you can check that out in the comments or not in the comments, in the description. I am gonna pick up this graphic novel series. I have actually already read this volume once but it's been so long and all of these novels are on Scribd and that is Giant Days. I don't know if you can see. So this is a graphic novel series in which you follow I believe three friends who just start university and they become friends super super quickly but they all have their own struggles in university and I just remember loving this art style. I will give you a little glimpse of what it looks like and also just the fact that they're all like going to university having their own personal struggles. I think that it is something that we need to still like talk about and maybe some more awareness needs to be spread about how difficult going to university can be sometimes. All of these I'll be able to read afterwards so I'm looking forward to that a lot. And this one is just like 114 pages. So that would already be amazing for this challenge. I might consider taking this book with me. I just received this in my book of the month box and it intrigues me so much. And that is Don't Cry For Me by Daniel Black. If you're watching this video, you see me talk about it in the sponsored bit, but it just seems like such an emotional read, but one that truly fits in my lane of genres, book genres, things that I will enjoy. A black father makes amends with his gay son through letters written on his deathbed in this wise and penetrating novel of empathy and forgiveness. As Jacob lies dying, he begins to write a letter to his only son, Isaac. They have not met or spoken in many years and there are things that Isaac must know. Stories about his ancestral legacy in rural Arkansas, Arkansas? I don't know how to pronounce that state, so don't hate on me, I'm not an American. <laughs> that extends back to slavery. Secrets from Jacob's tumultuous relationship with Isaac's mother and the shame he carries from the dissolution of their family. Tragedies that informed Jacob's role as a father and his reaction to Isaac's being gay. But most of all, Jacob must share with Isaac the unspoken truths that reside in his heart. He must give voice to the trauma that Isaac has inherited, and he must create a space for the two to find it's like almost 300 pages, so it's not a too huge book. Something about this book is piquing my interest. I just like emotional books that make me feel all the feels. And I feel like that one is gonna be it. I mean, it also has cry in the title, so I might be doing that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna pack my bags because my room is a mess, like I said, but I'm also going back to my dorm and I cannot wait to start reading all the books this week because I have a week off of uni. So I'm treating myself to books, book shopping, coffee, and lots of other amazing things. <laughs> update on how the reading has been going. <laughs> Let me grab my book. Okay, I am currently on page 105. So I read a little over 70 pages, I think like 73. But that means that I didn't reach the 100 pages yesterday. Today, I am doing some really fun things. I'm taking you with me. I am meeting a friend downtown in the city. We're gonna do some shopping. I mean, we're most likely gonna go to Brousse, which is one of my favorite bookstores. It's a beautiful, beautiful bookstore. They have also like a ton of English books, which I rarely see in Dutch bookstores, but I feel like they are picking up on the fact that we also like to read 
in English. So hopefully tonight I will have time to read more in this book. Until so far, I'm liking it, but it's not anything special. It's mostly our main character being fed up about her ex and him dating another girl right now. And she doesn't feel really great about that. But also I feel like there should be a trigger warning before starting this book because I think the mom is dealing with some alcohol issues, depression issues maybe as well. And there's definitely some talk about drug use. So I don't know, the cover looks so fluffy, but I feel like the inside of this book will be a lot heavier than expected. So yeah, I'm gonna make myself ready and take you on our shopping lunch journey. Yay. <laughs> Je moet je er wel wat beeldstabilisatie op loslaten, maar met trillende handjes. Kijk, heb je deze al gelezen dan? Nee, die, die staat hier op het... Uh... Okay, I am back from shopping with Lonika, which was so much fun, but I wanna show you guys what I bought. Also, my room is an absolute mess and everyone can literally watch me film this. Quick haul, because I have four minutes left to film on my camera. Let's show you the non-bookish stuff first. So I bought myself these denim dungarees from Monkey, which I have been wanting to get for so long. Like I've been really wanting to own a pair of these types of jeans they're not really jeans but look at how cute it is this is an extra extra small which is insane because it's still a little too big for me but i'm so excited to wear this with all of these cute little like sweaters underneath it i think it's gonna look beautiful then there is this pink gel lac store in Utrecht. So this is gel polish. I've been wearing gel polish a lot lately. They have this store here and I just wanted to buy myself some beautiful polishes. So I will show you the colors that I got. They're all pastel because that's what I love. I have sweet purple, which is a beautiful lilac color. Then I have sky blue. Oof, I love this like periwinkle bluish color cannot wait to wear it and then my favorite color which is also the color that i painted the walls in my room which is called gentle jade look at how stunning that is oof oof this is gonna look so good i bought this new ring you could already see it a little bit but it has my birth flower on it which is a sweet pea no i actually have no clue <laughs> But that is from My Jewelry, which is a popular jewelry brand here in the Netherlands. But I also bought these super cute butterfly golden earrings. Oh, they're gonna look so good. I already had these in silver, but I basically only wear gold jewelry. And then the most exciting part, um, you saw me shopping at Busa or like browsing all the bookshelves because it's just my favorite bookstore. If you come to Utrecht, you absolutely have to go there. I didn't want to buy any more books because I already own too many, but it was, you know, time to treat myself to another book because my finals went so well. A lot of you guys recommended this book to me when I asked for another thriller recommendation because I actually have noticed that I really enjoy reading murder mysteries and thriller books and I really want to get into them more in 2022. And so many of you guys recommended The Chestnut Men, but this is actually written by the maker of this series called The Killing, which is super popular on Netflix. I don't think it's an adaptation of this one, but it has extremely short chapters. I think they are about like two to four pages long, which is my kind of book because it makes me feel like I can read super quickly, which I can't actually. <laughs> I'm the slowest mood reader, but I'm excited to get to this one. I have no clue what it's about, but this is the Goodreads description. So you can read it for yourself. <laughs> it is time 
for a reading update. <laughs> so it is February 4th right now and I haven't given you a proper sit down update in two days or something. I did some mathematics and I added up how many pages I've read until so far. So on Tuesday, I read 73. On Wednesday, I read 108. And yesterday, 91. So until so far, I haven't reached my 100 pages a day goal, but today I will definitely make up for it. I finished reading Giant Days Volume 1 and I just finished reading Volume 2. And what I've noticed is that I think from Volume 2 on, they have switched illustrators. And I'm so sad about it because I really liked the style of the first illustrator better. She just had... I don't know, it was a bit more cutesy, it was a bit more bold, but the story still is amazing. It's basically distracting me from all of my responsibilities, which I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Then with It Only Happens in the Movies, I am on page 170. So I've definitely like made some progress in this one, but oh my gosh, this is not a plot driven book. The plot is so boring. <laughs> and I don't really care for the characters too much. So, you know, if the plot is not there, but I do love the characters, it's usually fine. But what they're only doing until so far is working at the cinema and making a zombie movie. Like our main character is doing like a role in the love interest movie and that's about it. So it's a little bit boring. I just don't really know what to think of it until so far. It's a little bit underwhelming, but I am just still giving it a chance. And then I recently, like last night started Don't Cry For Me. I literally only read up until page 18 like the first chapter but the story is heavily inspired by i think daniel black's own family situation because daniel black's father died of alzheimer's himself and i think it's kind of like daniel black trying to make sense of how his father has responded to him in the past as well i might be completely wrong but i literally only read the first chapter so i can't really judge <laughs> I'm in my kitchen because I'll be painting this really ugly wall together with my roommate and I'm gonna introduce her to you. This is Jenny from the block. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this is my roommate, Yannicka, but we call Hello. her Jenny on this channel. Okay. Yes, you can call me Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> and she is looking amazing in her beautiful outfit. Yes, it's my painting. Outfit. Outfit, yep. I'm just wearing my pajamas, but um, we're gonna paint the wall because this is ugly as <laughs> Let's do it! Yeah, yes. let's go! Gelukkig gaat er nog maar een laag groen overheen, want als het dit was geweest, maar goed. I'm laughing because the wall that we just painted is literally the most uneven paint job I have ever seen. <laughs> but luckily we will be painting the wall with the same green that is in my dorm. So we just put the white on there to remove the red and grayish blue stripes. I don't know who decided to paint the wall that color. I am hoping that the end result will be better than what this looks like right now, but I'm gonna stop the reading challenge here because I have to edit this video. I will definitely be reading more today on Monday as well, but then I just will not have this video done by the end of the deadline. So from Tuesday up until yesterday, Sunday, I read a total, wait, did I calculate it? I read a total of 466 six pages in those six days. So as you can tell, I didn't succeed with the 100 pages a day challenge. This was a fail. I read about 78 pages a day. So that's still not bad for me. That is way more than I would have if I didn't have this challenge. So to me, it's a success, but it's not really. <laughs> I have finished Giant Days volume one and two. That's great. With the Holly Bourne book, I didn't read anything else. So I'm still at 170. It's just not really grabbing my attention at the moment because it's a little bit boring. Like I still love Holly Bourne and the themes that she talks about. The plot is just not so great, but I do think that it's great that she's talking about like parents having alcohol issues and that she's shining a light on the subject with this book. So nothing bad to say about that. It's just, she has written better books like the Spinster Club trilogy. 
And then with Don't Cry For Me by Daniel Black, I am currently on page 127 and I'm really, really enjoying my time with this book. Yesterday I was looking up on Goodreads like what people have said about this book and Cindy from, wait, is her channel name Reads With Cindy? I think so. <gasps> Cindy, don't kill me for not knowing your channel name. She wrote a review for this book. And when I read it, I was like, okay, I'm just like halfway through, but I'm agreeing so much with all of the points that Cindy has made already. And I am so bad at explaining my feelings that I'm always scared to like make a mistake if I word things differently or just like wrong. So I will just tell you what Cindy thinks of this book because it really reflects my feelings as well. And she has just worded it so well. So despite the heavy subjects, the book was a surprisingly easy and quick read because of the casual writing style. The way that Daniel Black writes this story, it reads super quickly. It's not very lyrical or extremely special maybe. It makes me reflect on strict parents and the close-mindedness of older generations that we've been through. How their upbringing and cultures influence their beliefs and their struggle in seeing life result in a way they hadn't dreamed for. It makes me think about how things like wanting happiness for yourself isn't something that an older generation isn't used to wanting because many older black people and POC were just focused on surviving. Oh, and until so far, I also agree with this. Also, while the format of every chapter being letters written to his son is unique, I wonder if the book would have been even more effective if it had had been written as a traditional novel so that we could have explored more of his relationship with his son instead of the limiting one-sided moments we got. Because I also thought like, ooh, okay, I think until so far, this is just gonna be from the father's perspective. And it's a very different perspective of what you're used to because he is talking about how he didn't accept his gay son and like kind of the reasoning why. Again, I don't know if I'm wording it correctly, but I also thought we were gonna have the perspective of the son as well. And I don't think that's gonna happen. So I feel like that's actually a little bit of a shame. I know I'm halfway through until so far, I would say three and a half out of five, but I'm leaning more on the four side than a three side because it reads so quickly. The things that are being talked about are also very traumatizing, lots of trigger warnings, but it's very interesting. So that's my final reading update, but I am very excited to be finishing up these books in February. Definitely let me know any other reading challenges that you would like to see on my channel. Comment them down below. Do not not forget to check out book of the month like i said use code sabine to get your first book of the month book for just nine dollars and 99 cents i hope that you guys enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up you can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or in the button down below and hopefully i will see you guys in the next one bye